let's talk about your health for a moment. You know, we live in a noisy world. Hair dryers going, lawnmowers going, sporting events, loud music, and for our men and women in the military, battle zones. They all do damage to our fragile eardrums that can often not be repaired. Loud noise is the number one cause of tinnitus hearing loss with a loud constant ringing in your ear and this afternoon we introduce you to 77 year old Joe Shaw he's a former marine who served his country but lost a part of himself in the process I went in the Marine Corps in 1953 and I served in Japan uh, the Korean War was going on at that time. And uh, I developed polio. I was kind of in and out of coma for, oh, I guess four or five days. And I woke up one morning and I had a terrible buzzing ringing in my ears, like a buzzer, you know, bzzz all the time. There were many nights we used to sit up at night with the noise going and drinking cocoa and figuring out what we were going to do. And it's turning about 3,800 RPM right now. And when I'm out in the shop, there's usually enough noise out there. Something's always running and it masks the sound of the tinnitus that way. The problem with, that I noticed with Joe was his tinnitus was getting so loud that he was really getting quite depressed over that. This is the time we've got to find an answer to this. And Joe Shaw joins us now in studio along with Dr. Michael Robb of the Robb Auto Neurology Clinic. Thanks to both of you for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Tom. Um, first of all, let's just start, Dr. Robb, with helping un uh, people understand what tinnitus really is. Well, it's a it's present in the absence of an external sound in the environment. It can be a hissing or a static noise, a ringing, a pulsing. It I think be quite it's, aggravating. It's also really interesting to find that 50 million Americans actually have this problem. Well, about 50 million have reported it, but those who hear it for longer than five minutes or so number about 16 million, and then two to three million are very severely bothered by this. Yeah. And Joe, I know you're one of them. You've been having this buzzing in your ear since you were how old? 21 years of age. Yeah, yeah, yeah non-stop all the time. It's got to make you crazy some days. <laughs> well, I, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope literally not, but it sure would mentally kind of wear on you a little bit after a yes, while, it, doesn't it? it gets to be tiring and it gets to be annoying. Yeah, I yeah. understand. Tell us a little bit, Dr. Rob, about the, the, the veterans that are coming home from serving our country and how many of them are really having this issue. Well, over a half of a million now, and this is the number one service-connected disability. The numbers are increasing almost exponentially. So tinnitus and hearing loss are number one and number three mm -hmm. in terms of the symptoms that the veterans are returning home with and causing concern. My, my job, in addition to the research that ATA is funding, is to help draw us closer to cures and give these veterans tools so that they can learn to minimize this this tinnitus yeah. and also improve their hearing if possible. So let's talk about that for a second because you have what are called maskers. What, what are maskers and how do they help your tinnitus? Well I wear them at night to sleep and they create a sound that I can hear instead of the tinnitus mm -hmm. and uh, it, it makes them so that it's not so annoying. Yeah. Yeah. There are other therapies as well. Tell me real quick about a couple of those sound therapies and things that are out well, there. Well, Joe has experienced over 50% tinnitus relief with digital hearing aids. Mm -hmm. And that helps tremendously during the day. And at night, he can turn to his sound generators, which are referred to as maskers. And that helps reduce the relative strength of the tinnitus, so it's not so prominent. Mm -hmm. And those are two very common strategies. And in combination with the proper counseling and supportive counseling and and positive positive counseling it really helps and you can reduce tinnitus two ways by improving your hearing and by turning down the brain's volume knob if the brain is trying to pick up sounds 
due to the hearing loss, yeah. the hearing aid does that work instead. It is amazing. We're looking at the, the, a graphic here that's the dangerous sound levels that are just out in society. When you're talking about a chainsaw or a rock concert, a lawnmower, even a hairdryer, which we experience every day, the enormous amount of sound that's out there. So, doctor, what you're really saying is try to limit the loud sounds that are coming into your ears as much as you can. And I would think probably for kids with their iPods, that's a big one. Right. New research is showing that some, some children and teenagers like to play the iPod at dangerous levels, about, yeah. about a third of them. I think families and parents can ask the, the children if there's a temporary tinnitus that they're hearing. If yeah. there's a ringing, they need to uh, take that as a severe warning sign that there's temporary damage to the delicate hair cells in the ear. I know you have a big walk that's coming up in D.C. Ranch to help raise money to find a cure for yes. this. Tell me quickly about that. Saturday, March 5th and one can pre-register the day before Friday. There'll be over 21 vendors there. It's going to be a family affair at D.C. Ranch and 480-303-1133 to pre-register. Okay. Walk.ata.org to learn more and you can even donate and contribute virtually. You don't have to make the walk if you're busy, but you can contribute in great ways online. Jump online. All right, Joe, thanks so much for being with us and sharing your story. We appreciate it. Dr. Rob, thank you for being right. here as thank well. Thank you. Thank you. We've linked that information on our website at abc15.com. Just find us under the lifestyle section at the top of the page.